Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Let's cheers to a weekend in my life vlog. Now this is not going to be a typical weekend because my husband is off this weekend. It is three day weekend so we're going to like run around and do different things and I thought why not bring you along. So we are going to be making candles this weekend. I'm not sure if it's going to be as soon as I get ready before he comes back from eating breakfast with his dad or if it'll be later tomorrow. So this is gonna be a two day weekend vlog. So today we are going to the library for our Friends of the Book sale. We gotta go pick up a pottery. We got to um, go to Lowe's and shop and source and price things for our landscape we're doing. What else are we do? Thrift store? I'm not sure. And then tomorrow Jacob is taking me out to eat to a place that we've never been and I have no idea what it is. So. Come along with us as we go about our business and go about our weekend. And I wanted to take you along. So I'm going to curl my hair, do my makeup, and then I will catch you in the next clip. All right, guys. I'm dressed. I'm ready. My hair's done. My makeup's done. Now we have some time before he gets home. So let's make some candles. We're going to do the... Make Market Sand Art Wax Candles Kit. I got this from Michael's. It is my favorite craft store. Um, so we're gonna do this. I've been wanting to make candles and I wanted like an easy beginner one. I found one I really, really loved at Walmart, but it was like a three hour drive and I was not paying $10 shipping to get it shipped here. So I said I got 40% off. I might as well just go buy this kit from Michael's and let's get started. So at first it says, Prep your work area before you work by covering the newspaper or cardboard to protect the surface. So I'm going to actually lay down um, some a garbage bag. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, garbage bag is laid down. Now it says to prepare your candle caner, container. Thoroughly clean containers prior to use. So let's go ahead and open the kit and see what is in the kit if I can figure out how to open it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, it looks kind of messy. So let's go ahead and pull you down so we can open it together. Okay, so now I'm just going to dry these off. I'm not really sure how we're supposed to wash them. I just washed them with dish soap, I don't think it really matters because nobody's eating out of them. You're just burning a candle in there, but we are doing what the instructions say. I'm going to put an apron on for this, guys. It's just because I'm wearing a white shirt. Maybe we'll do that in a second. Okay, so I have all three glasses washed and dried and ready to go. spring apron is on and this also came from Michael's as well. Again, this video is not sponsored by them, but I absolutely love Michael's. It's right there by my house. I can drive to it when I'm ready and it's good to go. Okay, so now let's read instruction three. Wicking. Place the wick clip in the center of the bottom container using tacky wax or a glue stick. Apply pressure to secure the bottom of the glass. Lay a wooden die rod or pencil centered across the opening of the glass. Wrap the top of the wick around the wooden dial to ensure your wick stays centered and straight. Okay, now it says for best control pouring, open bag with one corner and use both hands to perfectly clear carefully and slowly. Alternate colors as desired. To create your own unique pattern or design, try lining an angle or poke a die rod along the surface. The drap to drip top color bottom layer. If done continuously around the primer glass, it, this will form a zigzag layer of pattern. So I'm actually going to do red and white for the first one. So we're going to open a corner of it and we're just going to pour it in. Okay, and then I'm going to like shake it a little bit, then we're going to do the white one. 
Again, guys, this is just sand wax. It is not like actual candle wax, which is fine for my first candle. It is a little messy. All right. Gently tap the glass cream to help the wax settle. Trim the wick about one fourteen. Oh, that is really pretty. Okay, whoa. Okay. Okay, now it says that we want to gently tap the glass container to help the wax settle. Trim the wick one fourth of an inch above the wax surface. Your candle is now ready to burn. So, let me grab a pair of scissors here. These are right about there. And then it says your candle is ready to burn. And there we have my first candle burning. So let's go ahead and make another one that was really fun. All right, there's all three candles. So we have the first one I made, which is the red and white one, then the WVU colors, and then the spring one. Guys, I love how they turned out. I was scared that I wasn't gonna like them, but I do. And I was scared, like, see how I said that this is like a sand wax? I was nervous that it wasn't going to melt it. It was always gonna be sand. But I think the more you get down, the more it's gonna melt. Oh, look, the blue's coming in the top of that one. See how it's melting the wax? It's gonna look awesome when it's wet. All right, we're off to the bank and then the library book sale. Is there any uh, books that you have in mind that you're looking for? Um, just a beginner's gardening for raised flower beds or raised beds, whatever you call that. What are you um, looking for? I think if you look for something in particular, you never find it. But if you just go in willy-nilly you'll find a whole bunch of stuff well then that's what we're doing all right we just left the library how many bags of books did you get um like two well i mean they're pretty big books so really i only got a couple books honestly but we'll do a haul when we get home you got more books than i did that's typical though yeah. It was only $3 a grocery bag, so it wasn't bad. So now we're off to get coffee. Can you imagine if we bought an Aldi's bag? We're off to get coffee. We should come back. We should actually go home and get an Aldi's bag and come back. We're, no, we're going to get coffee. All right, we have our coffees, and now we're going to open our pottery. Okay, I can't remember which one's which. Uh, that one's mine. So there's one little dish I made. Because this is the one that fell apart while I was making it. That's a good ashtray. This is yours. <laughs> it looks like a cinnamon roll. It does look like a cinnamon roll. There's, oh, they put your names on the bottom. Oh, okay. There's okay. Jacob's. Ooh. There's Sammy's, yep. Oh, this is yours. Yep. Yes. And then there's this one. This one turned out really good. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do with all these bowls. And then there should be one more of mine. I think this one's my favorite so far. Yeah, the color looks really good on it. And then there's this <laughs> one. That's a good... Uh, First time pottery, though. Uh, a water dish for a very small dog. Or a dish for coins or paper ah, clips. There you go. All right, so there's our pottery. All right, we are going into Menards to measure and look and source for stuff for our landscape ideas. This is our first time. 
his first name. I think I've been in there once, but I don't remember it. So I let's did, go. My dad loves it. We'll see how it goes. All right, we do need to get solar lamps, so. All right, we are back from our adventure. I thought we would sit down and do a haul with you guys. So, he's got more books with me, but we're going to start with Animal and Friends, uh, which is a local um, thrift store. And it, I think they, I've never been to the actual place where you can adopt animals, but that's where the money yes. goes to when you spend at the... It goes to their non-profit um, animal shelter. Do you want to go first? Yeah. You got more, I think, you got more books there at the li in the libraries. No, I only got one at, I only got one at Animal and Friends. Oh, what is, what's that? The Lost Girls of Willowbrook is what I got. So these are about Sage Winters are always knew her sister was a little different even though they were identical twins. They loved the same things and shared deep understandings. But Rosemary Wake to every emotion easily moved to joy or tears. Seemed to need more protection from the world. So it goes by and it turns out that her little sister did not actually die. They were keeping her a secret. So I got that from Animal and Friends. And then I got two little... Oh, I mean, you know? they would be shot glasses, but I'm going to use them to make candles. I don't use my shot glasses. I'm using both of them to make candles. Oh, I'm making... Oh. Yeah. And then I bought... These were like 50 cents. You can't really see them. But they are the measuring cups, because ours is like the numbers they're wearing off. So I bought two of them. I've had those, those ones are all the place. Yes. And that's what I got from Animal and Friends. So now on to you. <coughs> Okay, well first I got Goodfellas on Blu-ray, because I couldn't remember where it was streaming at, and <clears throat> I think I'm just going more towards Blu-rays and DVDs anymore, because I, I don't know where the hell things are streaming, and you got Paramount Plus and HSN Plus, and like I, and I, I actually never watched Goodfellas before, so. I'm gonna put in, let me put them in this tote when you're done talking about them. And then, uh, uh, I... Really excited about this. Uh, it's Dan Simmons, Children of the Night. It's a ma mass paperback. I love Dan Simmons. Um, I read, when, on our glamping trip, I read um, the, song of, the Song of Cali. And this is another horror book, except it's got, um, <laughs> it's got children in it. And it's like a vampire and all that sort of stuff. But wanting to read it, I finally found that. I think that's the best way to read that book is through a trashy paperback. Um, I just picked this up. Since everything's so cheap, I mean, tw 25 cents. Like, just... I know I know this writer. I haven't read anything he's written. He's like, well, 25 cents, throw it on the pile. And then the next one, I was actually looking for at the library sale and I couldn't find it. I was like, well, if it if they don't have it, Animal Friends will have it. And wouldn't you know, they have this. The Winds of War. Which is a big epic book about World War II and the aftermath and all that sort of stuff. And it's not in the best uh, condition, but for 25 cents, you know, you can't really make too much. And that's, that's all it. you got from Animal and Friends? Yeah. Okay. Count how many you got from the library really fast. Listen. Listen. I have a perfectly good excuse. I, I have nine from the library. Five, six. Is that it? Yep. Seventeen. Seventeen books from the library, no, and listen. I had nine. Listen. Uh, well, I don't go to these... Library sells very often, so you kind of had to make a event of it. Last time I went to one, we were at the old place, and I didn't I didn't know what to buy. I was like, I guess Stephen King's okay. I guess that, I've heard of that writer, and now I have a whole plethora of writers that I enjoy. Okay, so you're gonna share two, and I'm gonna share one each time. So you can go <laughs> share two, and I'm gonna share one. All right, do you want to go first then? No, you can go first. Okay, I'll, I'll, well, this is real quick. This is Closing Time, the sequel to Cash 22 by Joseph uh, Keller. Um, Cash 22 is a wonderful, wonderful novel. 
and I've always wanted to read the sequel to it, but I just never really got it. And uh, uh, from my here, it's it's uh, a lot different, but uh, excited to find that at the library sale. Um, this is 1356 by Bernard Cornwall. Cornwell. He's a historical fiction writer, which is uh, my kind of jam. Um, so excited to get that. Right, there's your two. Well, can I just do this one because it's also Bernard Cornwell? Oh, I guess. It's the uh, Gallows Thief, which takes place after the Napoleonic Wars. Oh, I like the map in the front of the book. Yeah. 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 And then, can, you, can I see that one book? Which one book? The uh, other Bernard Cornwell. Look at the Nicholas Edges on that. And it's like dark and looks like it's like a book from the time. That book takes place during the Napoleonic Wars and okay. that's my kind of jam. So I got one that's called It Happens in the Dark by Carol O'Connell. It's a Mallory novel. So Mallory is one of the greatest characters of ever in detective fiction. Um, it's a crime writer. The reviews called it a play to die for after the woman who was found dead in the front row. It didn't seem so funny that the next night when another body was found, this time the playwright himself, his throat slashed. So Detective Callie Mallory of the New York PD Special Crimes Unit takes over, but no matter what she asks, yeah. no one seems to be giving her a straight answer. So, it's a little, little whodunit book. I'm not reading all of that. Uh, the, the, the I didn't read flaps. this. I didn't read all the flaps. I'm not reading all the flaps because it'll be here forever. Oh, my book. I didn't read all the, I didn't read the whole flap. <laughs> uh, so I do two, right? Yep. Uh, this one's the Sanatorium. I think I may have heard someone say it was a really good book. I can't remember. Well, the library sale, it, it, this, this will explain why I got so many books. It's $3 per bag. Per and bag. And we got sucker. three grocery bags, so we paid $9 for all of these yeah. books. Um, and it's a Reese's Book Club book. Uh, a Reese's Book Club pick. That's really good. I, I don't know about that. No. But it says it's a gothic thriller, and it's like, well, you got me on that one. This one I already owned, but I didn't own the hardback copy. It's the Shipping News, which, uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I think, what was it, Atlant The Atlantic, I think, uh, said it was one of the top, it was one of the great American novels. Okay. I also got, this one is called Mother May I by Jocelyn Jackson. Again, I was very iffy about this one just because I felt like it sounded a little scary. You'll be fine. But growing up poor in the rural Georgia, Brie Cabet was warned by her single mother that the world is a dark and scary place. Brie rejected her mother's fearful outlook of life and proved her right. Having married into a family with wealth, power, and connections, Brie now has all the women you could ever dream of. A loving lawyer husband, two talented teenage daughters, a new baby boy, a gorgeous home, and every opportunity in the world. Until the day she wakes up and sees a witch peering in her bedroom window. So the scariest part about that is being in rural Georgia. Probably. Okay. Um, the Shadow of the Wind by Carlos. Oh God! I just Google how to. <laughs> uh, how oh, dang it? Carlos Safon, who I think passed away a couple years ago, which is a shame. But th this guy, he face. wrote. <laughs> um, Oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was one of the first books that I ever bought when we first started dating. Like, you got me into reading, and it was the first one I ever got, and I loved it. And uh, I never got, I never had this one. Well, so good. That's exciting. Did I do is that one? That's one. Okay. Um, I guess I'll do these two together. It's uh, two Ken Follett novels, uh, Column of Fire. And wide out. Uh, the Column of Fire right now complete the uh, Kingsbridge series, and wide out just seems like a really cool kind of modern day. Uh, well, we a winner into the thriller, you know, wide out. So he just reads what he feels. I read based on seasons. Like I like to have Halloween books. I like to have fall books. And if I want to read it and it's not fall, I'm not going to read it. <clears throat> well, if the book is good enough, you'll feel like you're in the season. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I have Margaret Marin. Is that how you would say her name? Margaret Marin. M yeah. Marin. This is called A Christmas Morning. What you so it's a holiday oh. season in rural North Carolina's oh, no. Culleton County Sheriff's Department. Deputy Dwight Bryan and his wife, 
Judge not. Have props to traditional pine tree in the living room. Christmas lights have been hung. Anzel's famous fruit cape has arrived. Deborah cannot wait to celebrate with Dwight and her stepson and all the relatives. Then a tragic car will cast a dark cloud of the rally. Be. And they must find the killer because more ha killing is happening. Ooh. <coughs> Leo. Right. What are you doing? Um, I I'll read the flap on this one. Uh, do, 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 do. The Shadowland is a mesmerizing story that spans generations and unearths the troubled history of a gorgeous but haunted country. A young American woman, Alexandra Boyd, has traveled to Sofia, Bulgaria, hoping that life abroad will salve her wounds left by the loss of her beloved brother. Soon after arriving in this elegant Eastern European city, however, she helps an elderly couple into a taxi and realizes too late that she has accidentally kept one of their bags. Inside she finds an ornately carved wooden box engraved with a name, Soyan Lazarov. Raising the hinge lid, she discovers that she is holding the urn filled with human ashes. As Alexandra sets out to locate the family and return this precious item, she will first have to uncover the secrets of a talented musician who is shattered by political oppression. And she will find out too, all too quickly that this knowledge is fraught with its own danger. So, I think this is kind of similar to the Carlos Zafon book, where like knowledge Maybe. is, is uh, dangerous. Um, is that the first one? Yeah. Okay. And then I'll do these two together. Uh, Ian McEwen. Or, how do you say his name? Ewan, e Ian McEwen. That's how you say his name. Who wrote, um... Oh, God. Where's that book? Uh... Atonement? Atonement, yes. Atonement. Wonderful, wonderful novel. I have not read anything he's uh, read besides that. Um, and I... I have a habit of getting books that I think I heard about and someone said it was really good. And Saturday is that book. And then Solar just sounds interesting to me. So I picked them both up. All right. I'm going to share two from now because then we'll be even. So I got Her Last Day. Sometimes their truth is better off buried. In this page-turning thriller by bestseller author T.R. Reagan, I like partners search for clues to mystery bear in their own past. So it goes back to 10 years about two different people. Three different people. Jesse, Ben, and Sophia. Then I have The Dare Me. This is on Netflix right now. I just started watching it, but I'm going to pause and read the book first. Um, Are you really? Yep, I am. You just watch the show and then compare and contrast. I guess I could do that too. But a searing novel of friendship, betrayal, and the dark truths that hide behind cheerleader smiles. Right, that's my two. Okay. Um, the Alien, Alienist by Cal, uh, Caleb Carr. It's, uh, when does this take place? Yeah, oh yes, 1896 in New York City. I love that, that time period when it comes to, to historical fiction. And uh, I have the sequel to this. Um, I forget what it's called, but really glad I got this. I've heard, uh, there's a, a booktuber on YouTube that I really enjoy, Steve Donahue. He loved this book, I remember that. I think this is even a, a TNT show. Um, Angel of Darkness is a sequel. But excited to get that. Was that two? Oh, that was one. Um, oh. I guess I could do... Well, hold on. You've got four I, of hers. I, I've done... I have a bunch of Elizabeth Georges. Um, That's all of them. Uh, let's see, this one. Oh, no, this is not all of them. She's got like 20 books. I know, I mean, that's all that's left is oh, Elizabeth George. Oh, I was going to say. I have a whole bunch of Elizabeth George's books. She's a great, great uh, crime history writer. Uh, I think these, yeah, these four are uh, part of the Inspector Lindley series. Um, I think she's got like 20 books in the whole series. It's like, holy crap. Uh, this is the first one, if you're interested in Great Deliverance. I have it on Kindle. That's how I read it the first time, but I never actually owned it physically, so I'll go ahead and do that. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not, this one is not a part of the Lindley series. This is um, a collection of short stories, I believe. Yes, five tantalizing original tales, yeah, okay. So this is not part of the Lindley series. And she's also a big fan of dogs. So, there's that. All right. 
And then here's uh, one of her just, I think her just uh, regular titles. I don't think it's a Lindley series. No, I don't think so. So yeah, that's all I, I got. Alright, I have four more. So, and then we'll like get started. Asleep? No, my heel spur, I just moved my heel spur and it like shut up pain all the way to my hip. <sighs> took my apart. breath away. When you get 28, it's all down <laughs> Yeah. So I got The Final Deception by Heather Graham. She is a New York Times bestseller author. Again, it's another FBI agent um, hiding in plain sight trying to find it. I think that's what I'm going for now. Like, you like fillers it. now. Yeah, I used to be just Debbie McComer and... Romance and people in a yeah. cottage. Yeah. Then this one, which I don't... I think I've looked at this or I have this. Um, it's called The Club. Everyone's Dying to Join. I don't think I bought it. But I looked. I remember looking well, at half price books. I mean, I didn't buy it the first time I saw it. There's no place like home. The home group is a glamorous collective of celebrity members, clubs dotted across the globe, where the rich and famous can party hard and then crash out in five-star suites, far from prying eyes of fans and media. But this is club, as your name is the list you're not getting out. There's that one. And the, woo, I about dropped my books. And then we have the fiance. Sorry, guys, the lighting is not... The fiance. So this is they had everything they needed for the perfect family vacation. Close knit relatives, a book luck setting, and a murder in their midst. And then the one I think I'm most excited for is Down a Dark Road. Um, this is about an Amish murder and hiding the Amish. Which is a weird yeah. combination. Fearing the safety of the children, Kate makes contacts with King only to find herself trapped with the killer. Where is he? All King asks her is to help him prove his innocence, and he releases her unharmed. Um, All right. Well, uh, I have a couple questions for you. Did you find what you were looking for at... No. Uh, me either. Yeah. But I don't think I was uh, left wanting at the last no. sale. No, no, no. But mine was more like I wanted to get a beginner book on Ray's garden bed. So it was kind of very specific on what I wanted. Mm hmm and I'm just going to order it off Amazon because we did buy seeds to start that today. So now i got to order what? and do my research. Because um, I want to highlight and have it to free to reference because it tells you exactly how to plant each plant. Yeah. So. I was going to say maybe your grandpa would have it, but he just, just, he just started doing raised blood. Yeah, he just did raised blood as well. So. I was looking for... What were you looking for that you didn't find? Uh, Mason and Dixon. I don't know why I was looking oh. for that one. Any, uh, <laughs> yeah, what just, are you reading? With that. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I, don't right. know, I didn't know what I was going to say. I don't know either. <laughs> Any other questions you had? Um, did you have a good day? I did have a good day. Did you? It was mid. Okay. <laughs> I always have a good time with you. Okay. Especially when, when books are involved. When books are involved. Okay. So... Oh, and we didn't mention uh, we got Zemo his Easter presents. We got Zemo his Easter presents at Animal uh, Friends. Animal Friends. Yeah. Now I just gotta get Leo his. He don't deserve it. He's eating almonds. Now I gotta go Google if almonds are safe for dogs. He what? He didn't eat it. He was just chewing on it. I don't even know. He was chewing on it. He was like slobbering on it. Oh well. We got. We just emptied the dish, the trash beforehand. That's why I think it came out of the trash bag. Or just on the floor. Yeah. What else do we have? All right, so we're going to end today's portion of the vlog here because we're just going to relax the rest of the evening, put our books away, watch TV, and then tomorrow he's taking me to a restaurant and we will pick up the vlog tomorrow. A surprise restaurant. Yep. Good morning. It is Sunday. It is the day of our brunch. So I'm going to drink my coffee. I'm going to do my makeup really fast. Then we're probably going to leave to go to brunch, and I still have no idea where we're going. I have two inklings, but... That's it. Told me yes or no. So we're going to get our makeup done. Then we're going to go read if we have time. We'll see what we have time for after we get our makeup and drink our coffee. And I will see you in the next one. Alright guys, a little outfit of the day. Um, I do have on this little cute sweater from 
um, Walmart. I got it on sale, and it was a size smaller than I normally wear. Actually, I think two sizes smaller than I normally wear. And these Can Can jeans from Marisa's that were tight, and now they are really, really big. And then, of course, I'm not going to wear the slippers, but I can't walk around the house without slippers. And these have these cute little details, but I'm going to put a pair of socks on and a pair of shoes, and we'll be good to go. So there is my outfit of the day. We are off to our Sunday brunch. Still no idea where we're going? You're not going to tell me yet? Um, I'll give you a hint. Was I right on any two? Uh, what would you say? Flower and feed or table nine? Uh, I would either confirm or deny. So here we go. All right, we just got done eating at table nine, so mm -hmm. I was correct. I had the spinach mushroom omelet with a side of fruit. Delicious, it was perfect. And I had the corned beef hash for St. Patty's Day, and it was really good. I, what, I'm gonna go back there again. Yeah, I do lunch. too, it was really good. What French roast did we get? French press. Uh, what was that it called, was Quantum? Quanta, it was Quantum Coffee, I think it was El Salvador. So it was a darker roast. It was yummy, and I usually don't drink regular coffee. No. Anymore. It was really good. All right then, we're going to one more stop and then we gotta go grocery shopping. All right, we are home from the grocery store. I'm gonna change into comfy clothes, unload the grocery, and then just do some things around the house. Second outfit of the day, another green shirt and some leprechaun pants. Now, time to unload groceries. You busy in here? Yeah, I'm busy in here. <laughs> what are you making? I'm making Irish soda bread. For St. Patty's Day? Uh -huh. It's going to go along with my Irish coddle. Which I've made before. They always say to make, they have your Irish coddle with soda bread. I never made soda bread. I never made, made anything baked like this before. He's doing it. Okay, so is this what it means by well? No, you need to make it where the red is not showing. Oh, so kind of like, like that. Like, yep, that's perfect. Kind of, oh, oh. Like that? That's what I'm assuming it means to make a well. I've never made a well before with this. Here you go. Okay, all right. Add your buttermilk. Well, <laughs> and our new things that we got from Animal Friends yesterday. <laughs> kind of make sure I'm doing this right. I don't want to screw it up. Add the buttermilk to the dried ingredients in the well. Use wooden spoon gently stir it together, stir in the center. Okay. The dough will be very shaggy. It's perfect. Okay. to show you what I got at Michael's when we went. That was the other stop we made. So I got these for my favorite garden. Every year I buy new ones to add to the old ones because I make a whole back garden full. So I'm going to film that this year as well. But I got this little flower cart. So my picture is this flower cart with the garden boots. So it has, whoop, it has the boots, the tool, the water gloves, and the gloves in there. Watering can and the gloves. So I thought that I could put that beside of it. And then I got this really rustic mailbox. And it actually has a mailbox in it, mail in it. And it looks like it fell on the ground. Then I bought this gorgeous little house. It's called a mini decoration house with a porch and picket fence. Down to the book on the chair. I absolutely love it. So I thought I could put this leaning up against it or another house. And this is just a flower stand. And then I also bought some wax for new candles. So there's my little Michael's Fairy Garden Hall. Now I'm just going to sit on the couch and show you what I'm doing. All right, all right. So the little project I've been working on is I've been using the Notion app. So I have the Notion app on my iPad, my computer, and my phone. So what I'm doing is I'm taking all the books from my library shelf 
or my bookshelf, I call it my library shelf, and I'm putting it into Notion. So when I go out, I can pull up Notion on my phone and see what books I have. So I'm gonna flip the camera and show you what I'm doing. I'm using my iPad, but as you can see, it says my library shelves right here. Basically, these are the books I have. They're all labeled by half. I'm not done. These are just what I got yesterday. And then the ones I read and the ones I want. So see, this one doesn't have a status. I can put status to I have it. And then when I'm done, I can put the year I read. And I can see that on my phone, my computer, and my iPad. It's pretty awesome, guys. And it's pretty easy to follow. I will link the um, tutorial tutorial, I can't say that, down below. The link of the YouTube channel that I watched to show me how to create this. Okay, guys, so I'm going to sit here now and do that for a little bit. I finished typing all 97 books. So those are done. All 97 books. My bookshelves are full. I cannot get any more books until I read some. So just wanted to update you that I finished that and I will link the YouTube video um, that the person is creating it so you guys can find out how to do it all too. It's pretty awesome. So as you saw, I switched from my laptop to my computer and I put on an Irish movie to watch today. So. I'm gonna go finish watching it in the living room, or actually probably finish it while I'm cooking dinner. Cause I'm. All right, it's dinner time. He's having Irish. Oh yeah, you want to show it? Irish cut cuddle. Irish cuddle for St. Patty's Day. Here it is. I think I might have to stir it actually. But right, here's your stir. It's sausage, cabbage, carrots, potatoes, onions, chicken stock, and then. I don't have, oh, bacon. I don't have any Irish meats or anything, so I just use regular thick cut bacon and uh, Polish sausage. Mm. And then I'm making beef stir fry. Again, we are in different no Oh, lands. you were gonna you make uh, beef kebabs. kebabs, but I'm just gonna make stir fry to make it a lot easier. Stir so fry is better in my opinion. We're gonna go ahead and start prepping all that. My dinner is served, so I'm gonna go eat and watch the rest of this movie called Irish Wish. I have like 30 minutes left. All right, so I finished dinner. I finished the movie Irish Wish. It was really, really good. Now I'm gonna sit down and play Dream Out Valley and read for the rest of the evening. So we're gonna close the weekend vlog off here. Okay. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed.